Or well, welcome everyone. Uh, this is, I'm Susan Jockheim and I am here to introduce Frank Eber, who is our guest critique artist, critiquer, artist, however you say that. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, he's going to do a critique today for eight of our members, which is awesome. And um, Frank, for, for some of you who may not know his work, he uh, does watercolor fabulously. We've had him for workshops in the past, and I've actually taken a workshop from him, and he um, is he he's got a very dry sense of humor I will say that too but last time you were here Frank you taught us to paint cows do you remember you probably don't remember oh was, yes of course it, it was very funny <laughs> so um, Frank you were born in you were born in Europe right in Germany in, in yeah. Germany mm -hmm. so uh, he also paints in oil which I think is really neat and he does a lot of portraiture which I think a lot of people aren't familiar with. So I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about that before we get started. And then um, if you have any work you want to show us and then talk a little bit about his upcoming workshop. So um, he's a great artist. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess I'll talk a little bit about myself. I usually <laughs> uh, don't really do that. But uh, like Susan already said, I I definitely paint oil and watercolor. So for, for I I was actually trained in in oil and and gouache first, and this was a long time ago. Um, so my history is is basically you could say I was an oil painter before I was a watercolor painter, which is interesting because uh, watercolor kind of came later when I, uh, it had to do with the profession at the time. I was a professional illustrator. And in the 90s or late 80s, 90s, they, you know, we, we would still paint all those things. <laughs> uh, and then they would, would be scanned in. And I remember one funny story when, when, you, when you had a, an image that you painted and you scanned it in, it was, let's say it was eight and a half by 11, you scanned it in. It took the computer all night to, to scan it in and basically render it all night, 10 hours. That wasn't the, that was only not that long ago, really, right? I mean- Yeah, oh my, yeah. That would now be, of course, instantly, right? Yep. So that's how things have changed. But but back in that in the day, we we did paint these uh, covers and kinds of illustrations, and they were done in gouache. Uh, so gouache is water media, um, and it was only a short step to try watercolor with the transparency, which is you know again another little thing that's different. <laughs> Uh, but to me, painting is painting. I always stress that in my workshops too, because I never understood how um, the watercolor scene is so so separate from from the oil painting scene. It's kind of bizarre, actually, um, that there's not a better connection between the the two. It's almost like separate worlds, and in reality, it's not really like that. It's it's just a, that the process of painting is a little different. Everything else applies, no matter how you paint. It's always the same painting principles. So anyway, today we're focusing on, you know, just a few works. We have, a, I guess we have a good chunk of time to do it, but, uh, but I don't want to go on too long about myself. I think I... I'm going to share a few a few works that I've been doing <clears throat> in the past, like just recent past. I had before I I actually just came back from Italy a week and a half ago, and uh, we did a workshop there. And just before I left, I got some pretty good news. I, I won some pretty big award in the American Impressionist Society. That was with the uh, an oil painting 
And then I won two others in one the San Diego, San Diego International and one was the uh, Missouri National. So, so I got third place there. So I guess I'm just gonna share yep. those paintings. Yeah, I asked Frank to please show those because they're they're very they're awesome. Let me see where is the here. Yeah, so, so I can I can share now, right? Yes. Okay. So let's start with this. So this is. I don't know if everybody can see that. That's one of my watercolor portraits. <clears throat> and I, I got this picture. This is actually a really old picture that someone that you use it is, I don't know if you've heard of the Pine Ridge Re Reservation in the Dakotas. It's one of the, uh, technically the poorest place in the United States. Um, and uh, this was, taken in 1973 um, this wow. kid. and I was just attracted to that expression on the face and so that's a portrait example this one is a Yosemite scene I painted this scene I don't even know how many times I over the years probably 10 times or 20 times this, this same, the same too. scene the same yeah. scene? oh interesting this is this is a the in, in the village, Yosemite village, when you're looking at the stables of the rangers. Yeah. And this is real early in the morning, so this diffused light, uh, which I'm really attracted to. And watercolor is really good with this kind of thing, you know, because it's it's all the flow and that the water creates basically. So this was third place in the Missouri Watercolor Society. Um, Beautiful. This one is is an oil painting uh, that, that got one of the bigger awards in the American Impressionist Society this this year, just just this month. So, and it sold. So I'm like, yes, <laughs> good job. You get an award and sells. That's sort of the best case scenario. <laughs> and this is a how, how, big, how big is this painting? That's pretty big. It's uh, about. 24 by 30, I think. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, and it's got a nice, really three inch frame around it. So it, it, it was a large fee. It took, took a, it was expensive to ship there. Oh, I bet. Um, but yeah, the judge really liked it. And the judge is like one of my favorite painters in the, in the country. C.W. Mundy, if you don't know him, look him up. He's, he's also a musician. He's, he's a funny guy. He's, and really, really ta talented man. Also, he's he's pretty old now, mid seventies, I think. Is it Lundy? L U N D Y. Uh, M U N D Y. M U N. Okay. I think it's Charles something. Charles W. Everybody mm -hmm. calls him C W. Um. So he was a juror, and he liked my painting, and it's very, you know, like impressionistic. I. With with oil painting, it's kind of like it's all about the uh, the brush stroke. Yeah. Where, whereas in watercolor, it's the brush stroke is not that crucial uh, unless you do like some details in the end. Yeah. So in watercolor, it's more like the the water flow basically. What's the light and the shadows you have in this are are just wow. Yeah, that that really was the main. I mean, and then that kid walking to school with her with a bag and it's just kind of really, I don't know, something about the scene and, and the light is really strange. It's both warm and cool at the same time. So so that's that's what I'm really attracted to these, these and especially in snow scenes, you see it often, you, you have these warm, cool areas throughout the picture. Um, well, Frank, one of the things that we had talked about before we got started here was about values. And maybe is this a painting that could illustrate some of those issues that you see in some of the paintings that you're gonna critique? Yeah, the values, I mean, in, in, in watercolor workshops or generally in workshops, when, when people, when you start painting, when you start out, you, you have this progression where you learn values first in painting, which is, 
sort of the big first step that may take a few years to master. So when you look at paintings in workshops, it's mostly value problems, either value or design or, or both. People focus a lot on color, especially beginners. They think paintings are about colors, but in reality, the color is sort of, it's important for a personal touch, but uh, the color doesn't really make the painting, you know, uh, in representational painting, it's, it's more about the design and the value that are much, much more important. And here you can see, I. The, the most important thing in a picture is always that you have the whole range in it. Uh, you, you can see uh, on her up here, she gets pretty dark here. Uh, and then we also have very, uh, very light areas throughout the picture. And then of course, everything in between, right? So, so any, any picture you ever paint should have that whole range in it. And, and if it does have the whole range, it has a, a, a better impact. You know, you don't wanna be all stuck in the mid-tones, forget your light, forget your dark. Or some people are way too dark, you know. In watercolor, it's mostly too light because people can't get the darks because when you apply the pigment, it feels like it's much darker. And then it, of course it dries and then it gets a much lighter all of a sudden. So, so a lot of, uh, and that's, that's a beginner problem because in, in watercolor uh, arguably makes it harder that way because you are putting the color on and, it, and then it will change before it dries. So I always joke that, you know, in oil painting, the color is the color. You know, in watercolor, it's not like that. Yeah. In watercolor, you paint and, and the color is not the color and the value is not the value. <laughs> right, right, until it so dries. That, that makes it much harder, I think. Mm -hmm. And here's one, uh, another snow scene. This is a watercolor snow scene. But, but you can see I'm doing the same things here with the, with the darks. A very similar scene in a way. Uh, you can spot the darks on the figures. And then, you know, of course, the light is just the white of the paper. So it's an illusion. Uh, but that kind of sets the precedent. And then in between, it's sort of the connecting values in between. And uh, you know, the design is here, every, everything, you know, it's all in this, in this section, there's nothing here. And there doesn't need to be anything there because if I put all these trees there too, the whole picture will be too busy, too overloaded and, and actually take away from what you want to say. So anyway, so that's one last one. This is also a snow scene, uh, but you can see that the picture works because it's it's like it's got the whole value range in it, and and I haven't even spoken of color at all. So you know these colors up here, let's say that that could be a different blue. This could also be a a, a violet. It doesn't matter because the overall scene. Uh, really works because it's the right values in the right places. And of course the design too. And I talk about design while I'm uh, critiquing the, the paintings more, but you can often see there's a path through a picture, right? If, and those are things that work really well. And then you can have, you have this picture, this, building here on the right side, if you put your hand over it, that painting would not be as strong because it needs something on the right side to balance that really light building up out on the left side. So it, it's that, that whole overall balance that's very important. But these are just examples. Let's get to the critique. 
So I have the first on my list is Alison Turner, and I picked the people scene. So I show the photograph first. There is Alison right there. Uh, she seems like she's on the Golden Gate Bridge or something. <laughs> so here's the here's the reference piece. Uh, let's talk about this for a second. Uh, overall, I like the idea here. This group kneeling in the grass conversation tells a story. So a story is always good. Um, now, what are the problems with this picture? Well, the problems are the trees. <laughs> the, the trees uh, are um, they're very prominent and sort of in your face. And they almost take away from the from the group that's sitting there. So that's really hard uh, to make work with if you were just to copy it the way it is. And then to make it worse, they, they go like this too, like they go at angles. So what happens is when you look at this picture, your eyes go to the trees more than they go to the people because you know it, it commands so much attention. So that that's my was my initial uh, thought about this. So you'd almost benefit to zoom in on this scene some somewhat, like I don't know, you like on the on the lower right side. Let's say if I use some of these tools here. So so basically to get rid of some of these trees on the right side background is okay that they're, they're not as strong in value as you can see I'm talking about um, uh, over over here that's that's light enough so that could that could be a good guide as to how we should render these trees for instance because then we can have the main scene down here with the stronger values and the and the weaker values for the trees back there. So that's one solution that I see. Um, the other solution is to just uh, to just sort of zoom in on uh, on it a little bit. Let's uh, let's try that. If can you can everybody see this this frame? Yes. So, so this is sort of an idea, for instance, that could work. You'd have to rearrange some of the figures a little bit, okay? But otherwise, uh, in terms of the trees, they don't really bother. Uh, they don't really. They're not so much in your face at this. In when I crop it like that, so that that's my idea here. Let's look at Allison's uh, work here for a second. So she kind of did did okay with the bottom part here. I think the grouping of people is okay, that works. Um, but then you can see how these trees are, are really interfering with the scene. So, so they need to be knocked back um, to make this picture work. And then the other thing, if you look at the re reference again, values we talked about it before look at look at the the girl here and and tell you know like hold on i need my other tool so her she's sort of the center in this your eyes tend to go there why well because she's got the most uh, discrep value discrepancy on her. She's got really darker parts and she's got the really light parts on her shoulder and top of the hat. Um, so she's kind of an, um, uh, uh, an important figure, but to get that light on the shoulder, you have to be darker with the surroundings. So, you know, you can't have the light without the dark and vice versa. So so think of your values first. Think of, okay, how, where is my dark, medium dark? Where is my light 
and then you you can have you have to paint accordingly so if you like if you stay within the same range everywhere like let's say this jacket here is almost the same value as the grass okay uh same here uh, the hair here it's a little better this is dark it's a little lighter uh here can you see how this light doesn't work because this is also light here so light against dark dark against light it sounds simple but you know de designing this or figuring out where to put those values is probably the hardest part in painting um, especially when you start out this is sort of a mid-tone painting Okay. You have you have lights where you don't really need them, like for instance here, um, uh, and then you have these dark trees against it. So again, it it becomes a little confusing. Where's your subjects? Where what what's your story? You know what I mean? So, value. Allison, are you here? You can unmute. Frank, is it okay if she asks a question? Sure, if she has a question. So yeah, I was I was struggling with the trees because I was I think the trees were just creating a mood. And so and then then I got kind of hung up with the details of the trees being backlit. So you would just what would you so you would just just, just do midtones and not be specific. Yeah, well ask yourself what is the important part about this scene? Is it the trees or is it the people? Right? So right. It's got to be the people. It's got to be that that group. And the story is the group kneeling in the grass and having this conversation. That's the story of the painting. If you make it about the trees, that would be a separate painting. You see what I mean? I, I mean, that's how you should look at it. If you try to do both in one, not going to work. Um, because you're sending mixed mis messages. It's like, it's like with music or anything else, you know, you're making it too busy, nobody will enjoy listening to it, you know. So okay. so make it really think about your story, what you want to do, what you want to say. In other words, uh, uh, another way to say it is why do you paint it, you know, um, and then stick to that, then you have a better chance of success. Because that's just that's just how it is uh, in representational painting especially but, right. but I, I i can see how you got hung up at the tree so it, it's it's easy to see awesome. but next time if you do this again just focus on the group and you can still do the trees but just make them make them more like a knock them back like make them weaker like kind of like what you did here over here but you got to be a little darker because the light should be on the figures okay so let's go back here one more time um, so ignore those highlights on those birch trees they're they're like this trap you know <laughs> so yeah just kind of like look at look at this overall feel back here. You know, they can put a little light here and there, that's fine, uh, but not, not so much so it takes away from the scene. I hope that helps. <laughs> yes, it was, it was very busy and, and uh, yeah. I, for the trap, so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Okay, so I need to, uh, Let's see. I want to bring in more the next person that will be Jane Wong. I don't know if she's here. Jane, you're here, correct? Yes. Hi, Frank. Nice to see you. Yeah, you too. I, I do. I don't see you right now. Let's see. Where are you here? OK. I'm, big, I'm a big, big Frank Eber fan. Oh, thank as you. As you know. know. 
Well, you came to, uh, like years ago, you came to one of my workshops, right? Uh, yes, many years ago, and I've been to many workshops since, and you've been an inspiration, uh, especially you. in your last workshop, you had your uh, sketchbook out with the uh, charcoal portraits, so I've started doing that. <laughs> oh, how cool. How cool. Thank you. So you That's... are an inspiration. Thank you. I'm just putting your work up here. Let's see. There's two, basically. Yes. Um, you know, uh, this I really like. I think you did great here with the design. I just, I know I'm supposed to only pick one, but I, I don't want to too, talk too much about this one because I think the design is pretty good with this. Um, I, I would, the only suggestion I would have is like, if, if there was a, a bit of a better, um, just a slight um, connection here, and I'm, I'm saying connection because I can't find the right word. It's, it's, it's sort of almost like uh, it needs a little more definition in that area, and then that painting would be perfect because everything else is very well done and I can see that you have a, a good understanding about color temperature too, which most students have no idea about. Um, you can see how the cooler colors are in the distance here and the warmer colors are up close, like for instance here. But you also have cooler colors here too. And that's sort of crucial to have the warm in the cool, the cool in the warm. Um, something that you probably learn after you mastered values. Um, now let's talk about this one though. That's very different actually. Um, so, and you said in your, uh, I noticed in your, the, note, the notes that people leave that you wanted to talk about design. Yes. Um, I did a similar scene like that once, and those are those are tricky uh, in terms of design because you almost have to find an area where you develop, and then the rest you you don't develop. Um, so one of the problems, uh, I you know, this painting still works overall. First of all, it's not. I wouldn't critique this too much. Uh, and I, I like how you how you lost some of these edges up here, and it kind of just goes into an almost an abstract. I think you could have done more more of that here, actually, and it would be even stronger um, because it's it's almost like you know the story of these leaves. So how many do you really need to put to tell the story? Is that that's like what I would how I would think. Mm -hmm. And the answer is usually not that many, um, you know, a cluster of them. And then the rest is just an abstract painting. And that makes it really, that makes it more intriguing, let's say. So if you put all the leaves, like one of the things that I see here, see this leaf here has sort of like the same uh, important as this leaf and then this one too. And then look at this one. So we have four different areas. So if you limit that to just one section, I think it's stronger. It's also less work. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that that's the key with paintings like this. Uh, otherwise they become I don't know, too, too busy. To, like I said, it, I, I'm not knocking it or anything. It still works. Um, but to me, that's sort of the main, the main thing. The colors, that's your personal choice. I won't say anything about that. I, I still like that you have the warm and the cools uh, basically diagonally uh, separated almost. That's good, that works. Um, 
no critique there necessary and but the only thing like i just said i think some of these leaves they, they don't even have to either be there or or just like treat it the way you did it up here like in this section where they become sort of an abstract you did a little bit down here in the blue too so oh. that's kind of nice too does that make sense to you jane yeah, so if I were to fix this, could I put a layer over some of the detail and get rid of the uh, sharpness? Yeah, that's a good way to say it, the sharpness. Yeah, if you can if you can knock that back, that would really improve it, I think. <clears throat> okay. okay. Definitely. Otherwise, otherwise it's it's pretty strong. The the only other thing I don't really See, I don't know if you need this light here. You see this light? Yeah. Um, it's a tough one because it's kind of like, that's where, in my opinion, the focal point would be on yeah. this leaf and the, maybe the one underneath and the third one over here. Uh, so maybe you should leave that and just focus on maybe like in this right-hand section here to, to get to get it a little softer. Okay. I, I would put maybe a, a little bit more, uh, you know, a brown over the middle, the, the bright yellow leaf in the middle, maybe. Maybe that. Also think of your colors, see how some of the colors are, um, I mean, the values in the, on the red leaf here are pretty strong compared to the background. So uh, one thing you can also do is you strengthen the background to the leaf, um, be it with, uh, you can almost use a similar color. See, if you look up here, uh, you know, these colors are very similar that the background kind of blends into this leaf. Um, and even this green here is a similar value to the, the leaf itself. So, so it kind of, kind of blends in more. So if you do something down like that down here, I think that that would work. Okay. And and anything that you can do to to just get the attention onto the left side more of the picture. Okay. Great. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. And also you know the blue it it's made mostly uh clustered on the lower left. So a little bit more of the blue maybe in other places would help too. And I know you you did some here, but uh, maybe a little more still. But otherwise, good job, I think. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. Good to see you again. Yeah, see you later. Okay. Um, so let's see, next on my list is Jessica. And I'm gonna get the paintings in right now. I can't do it all at once because the files are all pretty large and then the computer wouldn't be able to do it. All right, Jessica, you're here, correct? Yes. Yep. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the the one um, the one of the beach scene this yes. one boy on the beach this is kind of a cool image um, it's almost like he's blowing against the wave or something he was yelling at it yelling at it <laughs> yeah go away <laughs> pretty cool. Um, so I like I like the idea, but the picture itself is 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 not good quality, but doesn't matter really. Um, so one of the things looking at this picture right away is what you should notice is that how strong everything is actually. Um, the water is very strong, the sand is very strong in terms of value. That that way we get that wave, that light wave to really break nicely there. And the wave is almost, it's overexposed, I think. So uh, 
it shouldn't be all that white, but it, you know, you can invent, uh, you can change that easily. This, this was a printout on paper. I'm in the process of moving and the actual photograph is box somewhere. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's, that's fine. So, but those are the things you should see initially. So now looking at your work here, you caught the boy pretty well. Um, your water is basically not even half the strength of what's mm -hmm. in the picture. And, and of course, uh, that could create a little bit of a, a problem, uh, especially, you know, areas where the, for instance, the wave meets the water here. Mm -hmm. We don't get a lot of contrast. No, because the water is way too light. Um, so the boy is fine. I like this position and where you put him to. Uh, the breaking of the wave. Yeah, you, you can you can do it like that. Um, again, the reference is not very good, so we don't really see how the wave actually breaks. Um, let's go back here a little bit. It's hard to. It's hard to see. Now, of course, it's a little crooked too. So, mm -hmm. uh, but but you can kind of see where where it runs. It runs here, and then the back of the wave kind of runs back up like that a little bit. So yeah. that that could be okay. It doesn't have to be. It can come in a little bit at an angle, which I think you tried here. Um, mm -hmm. Your back of the wave. Uh, goes horizontally though and that's that's, that's a, a bit of a problem because it doesn't compute with the wave itself and and then see here too um so you may want to stay with that angle because that's the natural flow of the water when the wave goes like this mm -hmm. so that that i would change to darken the water and then the other thing that that doesn't read well is these reflections here. Mm -hmm. They go straight down and that kind of creates like a visual problem. Um, we don't really have that so much here. Um, you know, the streaks, they more or less all go into the direction where the wave is. So mm -hmm. you, could, you could give him one okay. for sure. You can even see it a little bit here it's hard to see it but it's it's there yeah um so for him it works for the wave i would not do it because it creates like a it creates a visual problem in the picture okay this is good here yeah make sure the what you know the water that goes out into the sand and then it you know disappears mm -hmm. into the sand. So, so we have some lost and found edges there. So you, you try to do some of it here, I can see it. Um, I would try to try to paint the water very wet with a lot of water and on your brush and do a lot of the, the watery effects wet on wet. So mm -hmm. while the paper is still wet, then you get a and you kind of build it up like that, keep the paper wet, and then maybe have a, another step with where you let it completely dry and then go over it again mm -hmm. to get these effects. But you can see overall your picture is on the, on the light side. You have, the only darks you have is in his pants here or his shorts and mm -hmm. then in the wave. And these are not, not that dark. So you, you can go much darker with the water. I think it has a better impact. Okay. Also see how the, I like how you change the temperature of the water. That's just like in the picture as it comes down, you know, the, it, it should get warmer. Mm -hmm. And that's what, what it does here. It's, a, it's basically a gradated wash that goes from a, coolish blue into all the way into a, a warm warm brown but 
But but see, when we're talking about color temperature now, can you spot these? See, this blue violet is here too. Mm -hmm. See that? Yeah. And you have that back there. So that's how you get a good unity in your picture when you repeat these colors. Okay. Okay. So that that's all. Uh, oh, well, that's what, one more thing with the wave. Mm -hmm. um, just look at other wave pictures uh, and see how they break. There's really more, more values within the wave. It's not just all white, you know. Right. Um, anyway, so that's the sky is completely irrelevant, and you kind of did okay with the sky. It's just sort of a light value. All right. I hope that helped. Yes. Good. So I'm going to check check the chat here. See, thank you for the comments here. <clears throat> Frank, um, Monica yes. is requesting, I'm not sure why, but she wants to, you to do her critiques last, if that's okay with you. Monica? Yep. The one with the barn? Monica she Sheety? Is it? Yes. The, okay. Yeah. Hey, Frank. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to request if it's possible to put me at the end. There's a conflicting meeting, so I'm just trying to see if I can manage both. Okay, that's no problem. You're pretty much, you were the last, the second to okay. last, so now you're just the last. That's fine. Okay, thank you so much. Sure. Um, so who's next? Let's see. Karen Fit. I know when I get. All right. I know Karen's here. There she is. Hi, Frank. Hello. <laughs> Let me just grab the images. Okay. And and Karen uh, just joined our board as hospitality chair. So awesome. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Okay. So we have Karen's here, and here's the reference. Well, let's look at the reference. Um, ooh, there's a lot going on. Uh, so, and I know you did two versions of uh, with two different photographs. That's not near. That's pretty close to where I am at, actually. It's only about an hour away from where I live, yeah. Monterey. <clears throat> um, this is actually a good picture, uh, but it it needs some editing too and, and I know you 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 try to do some so these the foreground is is good but it's also um, there's a lot of it there so the, the first question is that arises is like okay what is my focal what is my story is it about the sea um, the over the landscape or do I want to tell the story of these uh, nice looking flowers on the beach? You know, so so those would be two different paintings. Ah. So the, the way I see it, I would paint a landscape and, uh, you know, probably something like this could work and then make these a little smaller because they're quite large, but then you have basically a landscape seascape um, that would be one solution and you kind of did this really um, and uh, you know if you look at my crop it's you almost did the same design so in terms of design I think this painting is okay um, the the problem the big problem with this painting is the values yeah uh, it's there's no darks anywhere to be seen. There's there's only medium midtones um, yeah. and lights. Yeah, uh, I, I sort of abandoned them. That's why I brought this to the critique because I didn't know where to go from here. <laughs> so so the best way if if you're still working on this is to yeah, put yeah. something really dark next. Um, okay. Yeah, in the foreground? You can start in the foreground. If you look at these, 
these things here the, yes. uh, down here they're really dark get, right get this I mean, I say really dark, but they're pretty dark, you know. Yeah. Um, so, so that would be a good start. And then look at these rocks out there. I know you have another reference that doesn't have this background. Right. It doesn't matter. But right. these rocks are darker than the water. Okay. Okay. But look at how dark the water is. Yeah, so I everything needs to be darker. In this. So so find something you you know that's dark, and then just put that. Like for instance, the rocks are are, are pretty good. Let me see if you have some over here. Yeah. So, so these would be we know these are dark. So go darker, yeah. So make those dark, and okay. I mean it, dark. <laughs> okay. And then. You have something to compare to. Okay. And then you can say, okay, now my water looks like way too light. So so I go over the water next. Okay. And then it's kind of a backwards process, but since the painting is already there, that's the only way we can we can do it at this point. Uh-huh. Um, and then you once you have the water and the rocks right, it will be very easy to do this part and this part. Yeah because you can you can compare it to it right okay thank uh, you yeah i i think this is strictly a value problem i mean okay. this stuff putting extra flowers fine if you want that you know what i mean that's all good but I, the I, overall I'm sorry I put those in. <laughs> yeah but the overall uh uh impact of the picture is not there because the the values are are not there i mean okay that makes sense. Thank you. I think that that's that's your ticket, and uh, your other piece was just the same. It's the same problems. Yeah, I paint on them at the same time. Right. So yeah. try that. Either try it again or just try it right on top of this. It's right. It, um, and then also the other thing, when you do these flowers, I don't know what they're called here. These cone mm -hmm. thingies. So do just develop like three or four or five yes. and then make a make a blur of the rest. Like you were saying with the leaves in Jane's painting, same exactly. thing. Exactly. You and don't want to show every single one of them. It's yeah. it, it, it's not a good idea and it, the photograph has it like that but but right. even the photograph if you look you can see how some of these edges are just disappearing. Okay. Um, you don't really see where this cone, for instance, stops or starts. So, okay. so run with, go with that idea because we only need two or three there that sort of look the way they look. And, and the rest is just part of this pile that's sort of lost and found edges. And that's, that's way, way better than, than trying to paint every single one. Okay. Good advice, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Great. That was Karen. Now I wanna do Linda Brendler next, if that's okay. And those are portraits. Linda, you're here. Oh. Hi, I'm right here. Oh, cool. <laughs> I love your portrait, Indian girl. Oh, thank you. So let's take a look at this guy here. Um, I have, when you said background, that was in your note, that was kind of interesting to me because I agree with you, that's probably the worst, um, the, the biggest problem <laughs> oftentimes <laughs> with, with portraits. <laughs> you can see, let's look at this, the reference first. You can see how I mean, there, there's some really good parts in this, and then there's some really, you know, not so great parts. Um, uh, it's it's a very intense light in this picture, so you don't even see his left eye really, and his 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 right side of his face is extremely dark, um, probably too dark. The camera didn't capture it right. 
but that happens sometimes when you take pictures on on the street with or just people when they don't even know they've been taking a picture of um so a, a picture like that could work uh, because I actually like these extreme lights and darks in the faces, something that photographers hate. You know, uh, they, they're looking for the, the complete opposite of us. Uh, we look for the light in the face. They want to get rid of the light in the face. That's why you, you hardly ever find good painting references online of people for portraits because as soon as they're professionals, they kind of just milk it all out. And it's always like one value in the face, really boring. So this is much more interesting. But of course, in this case, it's almost too dark here. So you, you can't really, uh, you can't really paint it that dark uh, is, my, is my advice. And, and some of the background here is, I mean, these buildings, street scene, urban scene as a background, that could be okay. Uh, but this shape back here is kind of very large and very dark. So uh, as it is, I would make that a lot smaller, first of all. The thing is, you know, his hair, the right side here, is lighter here and darker here. So, so that's a characteristic we absolutely need to keep because if we don't have that, then there's no light play. And the same over here. We have that lighter part here and the darker part in the face. So these are the ideas we can sort of adapt, adapt from the picture. But we must not make it too uh, too intense, you know. Otherwise, it becomes like uh, it looks almost cartoonish if you paint it like this. The, the picture itself. Just go a step lighter and on, on the right side of the face here, and maybe a step darker here, and then the same the same kind of idea over here. The hair is actually okay. This could work here too but it's too large of a dark area. So it, I would just make that smaller. Let's take a look at what you did here. See, the thing is with this picture, um, these darks you put here, they don't, they don't correspond anywhere else. So, so it looks very black and whitish, the whole thing, even though you did a good job with the facial features here. Also on the woman, I like the woman portrait too. Um, but this is better to talk about this because the woman portrait is sort of, it's not as compelling, um, but you can see the problem here, your light here, and then of course your light here too. So there's no contrast, but then you have this extreme contrast here. So, you know, here it's too light. And then here it's too dark. So that's the first thing I would do differently. I like the, the fact that you just, like in the photograph, just put one eye. The other eye is sort of the viewer puts it there. I think that's a great idea. I do that sometimes too. But the section is just too intense. That makes sense. And then okay. here you can darken all this up to him, then you get the light. Um, oftentimes, when I paint a portrait, I paint the background last, which is kind of counterintuitive. So people would paint the background <laughs> first, mostly. But I like to see 80% uh, of the face done before I put a background, because then I can still make adjustments on the face, but I, I could see, I, I need to see the background at that stage. But the, the first 80%, I, I do without a background, period, no background. So, but of course it, 
it does depend on your reference to uh, quite a bit. Uh, this reference is is not the greatest. Um, have you tried lighten this up at all in Photoshop or something? No, uh -uh. it was um, I was in a class, a drawing class, and this was the reference she put up. Mm. So I only saw it while we were drawing it or while we were doing it. And I just didn't draw. I just started painting. So I just did the painting without drawing because I'm just trying to trying to get the light and shadow. So I really didn't pay much attention to the background. I actually am basically afraid of background, I think. <laughs> they, yeah, they can be really uh, they can be really tricky. You can actually ruin a painting by doing the wrong background. Um, it's, yeah. it's true. Um, but it, it absolutely needs a background here. I mean, you can't leave it like this. It's okay. Um, it, it, even just putting putting a light value on the left and right side behind him and to make this side dark will, will improve this picture a lot, I think. I do like how you lost some edges here. So, so keep that idea. But overall, like this whole contour here, we kind of need this dark in this area. Uh, okay. Otherwise, it, it's just not working. And then here we need it darker too. It can't leave, you can't leave the white of the paper here. Uh, okay. Find a way to, to integrate them more, basically. It, it doesn't matter what it is, actually. It doesn't even have to be anything specific. It can just be, I don't know, like I did with this girl here. I hardly mm -hmm. did anything there. But it's right. a little different here because her face overall is more like an even value. Um, her hair is pretty dark, but the face itself is sort of e more even. So it wasn't as crucial what I put here. So, but, but in, in your case, you can see how dark this is. Mm -hmm. you, that's a little bit different. If the face was all like that, then you probably don't need very little background. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Okay. I see. Okay. But oftentimes what I do too, one last tip is when you, like I said, I paint the, the face or the portrait 80%. I paint the, basically finish it 80%. And then on a separate, piece of paper, I paint different backgrounds and hold it to it. Oh, okay. That's a and, good idea. Okay. And that could help you a lot, if, especially if you have any doubts, because you know, like, you're not, you're kind of timid, you don't want to do too much. And so, so do it on a separate piece and, and kind of just cut it out a little bit and hold it there and see what the impact is. And then you know right away what works. Good idea. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so we have, how much time do we have, Susan? Are we okay? Yep, we go to 12.30. We should be fine, right? Yep. All right. So yeah, the you, other... gotta, you gotta call me out if I'm going on too long or something. Okay, I'll just yell at you. Okay. <laughs> okay, next on the list would be Margaret Bailey. And Margaret, I picked... you're here. I picked the bird. Well, I saw Margaret earlier. There you are. She's here, right? Yep. Okay, great. I'm, can you hear me? I'm here. Yeah, you're cutting out just a little bit, but we can hear you. We can uh, hear my it. internet's bad. <laughs> Yeah, let us know if you if you can hear everything. Okay, so I'm, here's I'm able the, to hear. Okay, good. Here's the painting. Here's the reference. Let me make this a little bigger. Well, 
Okay, I think this is an excellent picture for painting. Um, it's got amazing light on it, uh, especially on all those areas uh, that, you know, the right upper right side where the, the sun hits the bird. You got a nice shadow side on, on, on his left side. So that's really cool. Also like the foreground where he sits. Um, also uh, interesting um, how the how the whole the whole painting or the whole photograph I should say is is kind of color connected too. I don't know if you can if you can sense the green on him too. Um, where he sits, okay. there's some green in his feathers, and, and especially here, you can sense some green here and here. I mean, that's the green of the where he sits inside, basically, you know, so, yeah. so we, we always, any object that you paint, you know, is always connected to the background, because the background will be on the object, and it's, it's, that's just a, a good way to remember it, and, and not try to see things as separate shapes because they never are. Let's take a look at what Margaret did. I think she did an excellent job rendering the bird. Um, and the, the background could work like this too because, you know, there's no definition of the leaves, but you don't really need it per se. Um, as long as you have the right values there, but that's the, the point I was making earlier. See how the color connection is a little bit missing? That's one thing okay. you need to always uh, keep in mind. You know, uh, this unity in a, in a painting, you need to bring these colors you have here, you need to bring those here too. You know, that's, that's just, uh, and you did a little bit, I can see how, some of that blue here is in the background too. So that's good. But the green on the bird, I don't see it. So, and also take a look at the, see how there's some, some areas where the roundness of a shape, you know, especially in faces, for instance, or on the animal too. When the sun hits the, the object, when it rounds, there's a value change here, you know. Um, initially, it's pretty dark, and then it gets slightly lighter. And of course, here the fur changes too. So, but it's easier to see it here on his neck. It's it's kind of initially feels darker, and then it gets lighter again. Um, but overall, you get the light by putting. You know, like for instance, on the beak, the beak should be dark, darker against the light of the beak, basically. So, and you did a good job. So it, it's there. Uh, the other critique point I had, because I thought about this before, of course, um, his his claws and the connection to the to the tree. Okay. That's a that's a point that could have been done better. Okay. To me, it, it doesn't look like he's actually grabbing the 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 wood there. It's kind of like you you don't really see that connection so well. Take a look at the photograph here. You know, it's very important to to really observe what's going on. You, you don't really you can't really tell the leg from the tree only in certain places and only uh -huh. because you know, you know, intellectually. So paint it like that too. Okay. It, it makes it better because it, it creates a connection again. Uh, you, you were very careful to keep this completely separate, you know, just do the opposite. Uh, okay. It, it, it okay. has more life if you, if you just, if you just do that, you you do, you know you don't make him like a separate thing from the tree, a separate thing from the background. That that's always my big thing in workshops too. For most students, very hard to understand because 
they think, well, here's the bird, here's the background, here's the tree or the branch. Uh, I like to say it's all one thing. You know what I mean? It's all, it's all one. And that's the, if you paint it like that, it looks more like real life. It looks because in real life, everything is connected. There's no separation. The separation is in the mind. So let's look again. You can see. Okay. Do you have a question? Very helpful. I, no, uh, I see the connections that I need to make and what you're talking about, um, the, the clause. And so uh, thank you. You're very welcome. And don't get me wrong, you did a great job painting that bird. So it's not like uh, I'm taking away from your work, but this is this is, should help no, you for the I next can... one. Right, that's what uh, uh, I definitely, and I need green and the birds so, and the claws. So it, very helpful. I great, excellent. Critique. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have Margaret. So Monica wants to be last, so let's do Tanvi. Tanvi right. Buch. Yep, Tanvi's here. There she is. Hi, Frank. Hello. Unfortunately, I can't see you. There's too many people now in the room. <laughs> Let me see, where are you here? Okay, I'm gonna get the work in first. Oh, that one, yes. That's actually a cool picture. So here, here we have the reference. Um, it's very interesting uh, because it's it's uh, it's got really good values, uh, even as it is without even changing anything. We got these white caps on these uh, pier thingies, and then the top of the roof, also very light. The boats, of course. Um, and it's got an overall kind of grayish feel to it. And then you got pops of color in it, which is usually really pretty good for painting. And, and I know you, uh, let's see, your notes were, I have to try to remember what your note was. Let me see, I have it here somewhere. Well, Tammy said she initially, this is painted in plein air, you know, she painted outdoors and then, but these are just reference photos from the scene. Okay. Yeah, so again, to me, uh, this this picture has a value problem. Um, because if I if I look at the, the overall value of the plein air scene, even if it's just from the photograph right now, I, I see the dark sky here, uh, even darker water here. Um, and, and then you get this nice pop on top of the roof. Uh, and then you can even, in terms of design, uh, to make it work, we have enough elements here too. We have, see there's white on top of the boats, the boat itself. And then these caps here are white too. So even if we leave this roof, let's say unpainted, we have it in other places too. So there's almost like it's a triangle here, isn't it? And triangles are always a great composition. Yeah, I mean, in landscape or portrait, it doesn't matter. Triangles always work. So you did it. You did it kind of like a triangle. So in terms of design, I don't have anything to uh, critique about really. I I like how you you placed it a little closer, 
And then you focus on this boat, I guess, because you called it orange boat too. So, um, but see, the problem with this painting is it it the the orange doesn't pop enough, and it has nothing to do with the orange you're using. It has to do with all the rest of the picture. The rest of the picture is too light. The water is too light. The sky is too light. The background is too light. Um, so. Since these elements, and those are big elements in the picture, if if they're too light, then you know we have not enough contrast in the areas where we need. For instance, this boat here, if you recall the photograph, this boat, the white part on the boat was really popping out in the picture. It doesn't pop out here, but because you know there's nothing next to it that makes it pop. So remember, if you want the light, you need the dark too. So this boat's better over here because you, you use the pier to bring out the light here. Let me make this bigger here. So that works, but it almost has more significance in the picture that, than your little orange boat you see that right i mean this boat is the boat you see the one in front the orange boat mm, you don't really see it and you see it at second glance basically so one other thing that i want to address is aside from the value thing you also change the angles here um, this is much flatter So you changing when you change the angle like that, you're basically raising the the horizon line or the eye level. And uh, sometimes that's a good thing. Other times it just doesn't work so well. It in this case it doesn't make such a big difference really, but I I wanted to point it out so so you, I don't know if you're aware of it, but you know these angles are not. They're not like that, they're much flatter. And I see this a lot in students. They, in street scenes too, the, the, when the street goes like this, they make the street go like that, basically. So that could create a bunch of problems because then you have to actually stagger the, the objects in the picture. You can see here, um, this boat, let's say, okay, let's say the boat, the body of the boat goes to here and it almost lines up with this porch here. Now, if you change the angle, then the body of the boat stops here and no longer lines up with this part. Uh, so you're creating a different scene. So lo let's go back to the values though. So if you want your orange boat to pop, you need to make the water dark. And uh, you did this part pretty dark on the left here. That's good, like all this. Um, so if we, if we take a look here, um, and I know this boat is really not orange, but it doesn't matter. Um, so you could, bring it out like that because then it would be surrounded by the darks or the darker values and would therefore pop more. So when you painted this plein air, did you paint the, is this the actual image or did you do another, another scene or another attempt at this? I, I did a small grayscale study. Okay. Uh, and I, I did it and I took a picture because I didn't want to forget and didn't want to, the light to change and all that, but I wasn't looking at the picture. It was just for later in case I needed it. Okay. So, so I wasn't really, and the boats were moving, they weren't there. So I sketched it and then it moved and then another one came by and sure. so I realized this, the two boats that were parked in the picture, actually there were three at a point I, that I, I didn't really care for the three I wanted one boat that was the 
my focal point. And so the, the little waterway leads to that. The, the ramp down the building leads to that. And so right. I was trying to use directional lines to lead to that. And I really didn't care so much about copying the values as much as having a good design on its own without comparing to the picture. And I so understand that. The only problem I see is that you made this the focal point inadvertently. Because this I has guess. this has more, this is where the, the eyes go. Okay. Um, so if you wanted to, to really do it with just the orange boat, you need to get either rid of get rid of this one here or or just make this one really uh, less important in other ways you know um, i think popping the orange and making the orange more intense uh, is a good um, good feedback and also the white on this forward boat maybe i could tone that down maybe uh, that yep yeah. yeah yeah and then uh, yeah it's a tricky one because there's so much other there's so many other things here uh, but but here see see how there's more distance too between this left boat and i'm sorry i got all this i should really reload this picture hold on i'm gonna bring it back in so we can see the <clears throat> see that one more time uh, Sorry about that. Here it is. Okay. So take a look at the design here. So th this scene is much wider. Mm -hmm. So so you have more space here. And, and I think that's a pretty important aspect too. You didn't give this much space. So, so these boats are basically sort of crowding each other now and they're almost lining up too. So, and I know that's not something you can change on the watercolor, but, but if you were to paint this again, mm -hmm. I, would, I would definitely give it that space. Then you can make this even a little bigger, this boat, and then play with your colors on it. And then that could really work, I think. Um, because otherwise, I mean, the, the, the way you describe the design, that's fine with me, that, that makes sense. Um, but like, as, uh, in my opinion, this boat kind of puts a wrench into the whole plan a little bit. So, and this boat is not that important over here, that, that can be, just be there. Uh, but it's these two that are kind of you know, sort of competing with each other even a little bit here, don't you think? Yeah, I, I think the orange could be more intense because everything else is so neutral and gray, definitely. I can make that change and then I can see whether it's still competing and then change yeah. the vote. Yeah, right. Try that, see what it does. And if not, you may have to do another go at it. You so know. I had the other question I had for you was, what do you feel about the large amount of white space in the painting? If you don't compare it to the photograph, forget the photograph, just well, painting. Yeah, like leaving things unfinished. Well, is it unfinished though? Is it? That's the question. Well, uh, you know, like they, they would call this, like what was the name for, uh, there was a name for that when you don't finish. Vignette. Vignette, thank you. Um, yeah, that, that could work too in a scene like that, but, but you would almost have to fade like big, big areas out too. And not just like you said, you didn't paint the roof. Okay. That's, that's one way to do, do it. But if you, if you were to paint this water here and then kind of just sort of stop with the water here with, you know, or let it fade or something. That could work, that could be effective. Um, but by not painting anywhere here, 
uh, I don't think that that serves any any purpose like that, especially if you render everything else. You know, um, it has to be sort of like the whole thing is fading. Uh, that's my opinion. I mean, but you can play with that sort of idea. Like more gradation, more gradation leading up to the area of interest. For instance, yes, more wow. gradation from the bottom up. And then that is, for instance, all this would be just white of the paper. And then all of a sudden the scene would just sort of start. I see, yeah. I think okay. that could work. Mm -hmm. But once you're within the scene, I mean, you could always leave the unfinished parts, like, you know, the light parts like you did on the boats. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, they have to be unpainted, obviously. Um, you know, that would not change, you know, and you need your darks and your medium values any, anywhere else still. Um, but uh, yeah, design wise, those are always the, the big questions. How do you make it work? I think the way you took the picture, it's actually a pretty good design, this picture. Um, I like it. I mean, th th there's lots of things going on, but and lots of confusing things like on this boat that would have to be really simplified. But you know, like you like you did, you you you're focusing on a certain area, you know, or you can focus on this triangle only, you know, that works too, and make this much smaller, for instance, that boat. I mean, there's many different ways to make it work. Mm -hmm. Frank, we have about seven minutes. Okay, well, we have one more, so we should be okay. We should be good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Thank you, Frank. You're welcome. Okay, the last person is Monica. You know, hey, get Frank. The, hello, I get the work in. And yes, I do remember those were two, that barn, oh my goodness. It was yeah. a really pretty barn actually in reality. It is, but it's two. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the, the, that's the big problem, isn't it? Mm. I found it very hard to crop or even design it. Uh, and I agree with you. Uh, I kept looking at this picture, I'm like, oh God, how am I gonna make this work? Because first of all, they're very similar. They're both mm -hmm. almost the same. Uh, and then they are the same position too. Mm -hmm. And then nothing up there is really dark. <laughs> the only darks we have is really these group of trees. So there's all kinds of problems with this. Um, but the way I see it, I mean, the way you painted it is actually really nice, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I would probably, and I, I show you what I would do here. It's, let me think. So to me, I don't, the two barns to me they don't really work uh, i mean unless you crop some mm -hmm. something i mean i looked at your picture for a long time and i think the way i i would do it i would crop the second one mm -hmm. and make this one the, the main focal point so this would be the the painting basically um that's one option mm -hmm. Um, the way you did it, technically, it's great. There's no question about it. What I don't, uh, what I don't like, or where I see a problem, is there's all these directionals here. Mm. They all lead out of the picture. Yeah, I realized. You know, you already know this probably. Uh, yeah. And, and then these gates or these these dividers here make it even worse because they all go to that same direction too, almost. Mm -hmm. So we have a painting where everything goes in one direction, which is never good. Mm. We need something that 
prevents this this direction mm -hmm. you know i mean what you did here is good up here and this first barn i think that works for me mm -hmm. if you wanted to put darks this would be a place to put darks make this dark this tree and then this tree make that dark mm -hmm. and you did little darks under here already which is really good so that should tell the story you could even go darker with these little things mm. and then once uh then you have like this real uh intense you know pretty good valued area here and then you can make this one weaker and crop it i would definitely crop it okay. i think that's the only way i could see this and then th that would also help by by blocking this off here, mm -hmm. you would also get rid of this diagonal direction for the most part. And then this tree can go in here, but only like from the top down, like it would be all here. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Like up here yeah. and, and really dark. Like look at this picture. Mm. I would go that dark. I would just put this part or something. And then repeat that dark back here mm. and, and here too. And then since we have the crop somewhere here, uh, we're getting rid of this line stuff here. This, I, I think to me, that's like, there's a line here, then there's a line here. And mm. it, it's just like, it, uh, it makes the scene, uh, it's a difficult scene, the way you have the picture. Mm -hmm. If you were at the scene, you can walk around and find some other view maybe, but but working with this, that's that's that would be my solution. Okay, and, and, I, I think the, uh, what you said uh, definitely makes sense to me. Uh, at that point, I probably was more focused on capturing the vast vastness of the farm and that's why i chose that direction but then i realized it just took me out of the scene as in when i was following Dagna. so if you were to capture that vastness would you just take a different point of view or a different point where you would click a picture from or can you do anything with the current uh, hmm. do you have access have? to the scene or this is just the only picture you have I have access to this scene. I mean, it's it's a ten minute drive, I guess. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. I would definitely go there again and take a look mm -hmm. because okay, this is okay. And I, I sometimes putting the barn up high on the hillside that that's kind of cool. That could work. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that that duality that there's two. I think mm -hmm. that's that's a problem. I think that. Because e either way you place them in the picture, there's always going to be two, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And we don't really need two. So that's why I said crop the, the other one. But if you can go there, I would maybe see if we can, if we can get different viewpoints, better viewpoints, even that one overlaps the other maybe or something like mm -hmm. that. I mean, that- I see. You know, because then the scene wouldn't be quite as long, mm -hmm. uh, and the the long it it's it's very long and wide, and that creates all these problems with the lines going that way too, and following basically that format. Um, mm -hmm. so, I see. I mean, in terms of the way you painted it, it's very nice. I like it technically. It looks really yeah. Good. Thank you for that. I, I struggled a lot with this one. I think I did like two or three versions and I still couldn't find, I mean, it was missing something and I, I wasn't sure what that was. It's a and, very difficult design. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I was. I also thought of maybe just, uh, you know, the scene with the second barn mm -hmm. and, then, and then that red building back there somehow I guess that could work too. Um, that could be another 
and then just have a sliver of the first one, if anything, really. I think that could work too. Or maybe just push the second barn behind the trees instead of the red building. Uh, I mean, that would require uh, placing it further away so that only the first pan, which is on the right most, becomes the hero in this picture. Right. Yes. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting because this one has a little roof too, which is kind of neat actually, but you could put that on that one too. So, right. so those are just details, mm. but, but overall go there again and, and take another look, I say, and, and maybe you'll actually find a, a viewpoint that would be just, just to have a, a ref, better references to work with, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that well, thank sense. you. Thanks, Frank. Thanks so much. You're welcome. So everybody, we, we thank you, Frank, for the wonderful critiques. Um, he is going to be doing a demo for us next Sunday. And um, I hope you all can attend that as well. And a workshop beyond that. So uh, there are spots open. And I'm enrolled, so I will be taking it. And yeah, we, it's, go, it's on a, only going to be online workshop. So it's going to be a, a three day. Three day. And I believe it's Tuesday to Thursday. Yep. So oh, if anybody is interested, Monday, on a no, short Monday, notice. Monday through Wednesday. Monday through Wednesday. Sorry. Yeah. Demo on Sunday, the previous. Oh, Sunday. that's right. Demo is on Sunday uh, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's correct. Correct. Yes. Can well, I ask a question? Um, the format will be Frank will be giving us four images. Correct. And then three, we will get a, a drawing and hopefully get through all those images. So you'll come out with lots of paintings. Yeah, the plan is to paint one painting a day. Uh, and, you know, online is a little different. You can't make demos that last forever. So we break the demos up and then students paint. Me, I paint again, students paint again. The whole thing takes a little longer because of course I can't walk through and look and see what everybody does. But so you have to show me after every single step. But Susan will be a great coordinator. She she knows what she's doing, so I'm not worried. <laughs> but and then uh, I'll do uh, something different too. I I supply the drawings, so you can just you, you can see my drawing basically. Uh, beforehand right so, so yeah. hopefully um we'll get those drawings from frank pretty quickly here and then those all that information will get sent out to everybody this next either week. today or tomorrow i have one yeah. done at this point so okay i gotta do two more awesome well thank you frank i'm sure everybody i know i loved it i always do so thank you so much thank you thanks for thank having you. me everyone and i hope i was of any help very Frank. much. Thank you, Frank. Okay. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Frank. Bye-bye. Bye now. Bye.